Wait for it. Wait for it. Nope, I missed. If I would have hit that at 90 degrees in the ass, it would have been a one-hit disable, and that tank would have been screwed. But it looks like it's going down anyway. We're doing some endgame conquest. I'm going to be talking about general thought processes and tips to help you become a better engineer, which is really important in these endgame maps. Armor and air rule these maps, and if you can't stop their armor, they're just going to steamroll you by establishing choke points and just shoving it down your throat. Another thing to do is pay attention to your mini-map when you're spawning or your map spawn list. If you're an engineer, go to where the heat is coming. I see lots of dead people. Oh, there's some red flashing vehicles. Let's spawn there. Try to dodge the tow missile and then play from cover. When you're an engineer, it's important to let other teammates distract. If it's a medic, a recon, or even a support player, and you got a nice beat on that guy and you're trying to kill him, let them be the fodder because you're trying to do the right thing at the moment. Always pay attention to your mini-map as well because other players and other armor can sneak up from you and learn how to shade like I'm doing right now. It's where you take these rocks or whatever cover you have and change angles. It's basically the ultimate game of cat and mouse and some of the best engineers in the game are the biggest pests and annoyances around. Obviously you see the Shaky Aim 2013 in action there, killing some Sunday drivers, and it is with the foregrip and laser sight. Probably the worst combo possible on this map because we're in a wide open space, but we're gonna go with it. Another tip is to recognize when an LAV or tank has reactive armor and you have to play it safe and play it slow. If I take one more hit of damage, or flak, or splash, I'm done. Thank God there's a support guy there doing a little trolling with the C4, and I need to re-angle myself. Don't play the same rock. Don't get stuck in the same spot. Play that cat and mouse, and play the game of angles. Uh, I kind of saw the uh, helicopter there going for a landing. I was going to go for a kill, but the other helicopter got it instead. So, what about some uh, close quarters work and try to take the dropship point back? Emtar's a pretty good combination. The higher recoil, higher deviation uh, isn't the best, but in close quarters, this is the go-to gun. Hip fire, one of the best in the game for the engineer class. This and the A91, people don't realize how strong that A91 is at hip fire. Uh, it's, it's a beast. Not as good as this, but a beast. And I'm going to sit tight here for a second because I'm going to wait for my teammate to spawn on me who's been kind of working with me here, uh, attacking the same points. And then I need my health to build up. If you're an engineer, if you're close to an attacking point, or medic, or recon, just get your health up. That's all you have to do. I think I see somebody there, so I'm going to nade that spot, flush him out. And this is Camper Central. It is ridiculous how many times I've played this map, or TDM the one time, and there's 15 guys in there. So I'm going to try to get a sneak peek, uh, but I don't get any closer because there's obviously 16 guys in there. So if the Emitar is going to shine, it's going to be right here in these close quarter engagements. And even that is considered medium range for the Emitar. Just remember when using this kit to burst fire more than you would an M416, more than you would an M16, but less than an AS Val. AS Val at those ranges is basically micro bursting and tap firing all day. Another thing you can do with the RPG is use it to get splash damage to expose people or potentially kill them. Sure, you can hit them in the face with it, but there's a lot of times where you know there's somebody behind a container, you see them on the minimap, they're hugging the corner, just shoot at their feet, catch them off guard, rush them, you might potentially get the kill, or at the least amount, you see a hit marker because you didn't know someone was there, and now you know. One thing about the MTAR, beyond 25 to 30 feet, stand perfectly still while shooting this thing because the deviation is just nuts. Up close, you can dance all day, you can hit fire up close, you can do the crouching, uh, you can do all the pretty little dance moves that we talked about in the Breaking Bad Habit series. Because uh, that's important to know some dance moves for those close quarters. And that is the beauty of this gun right there. Those two kills. Point blank in the wheelhouse, it just absolutely shreds people. Uh, AEK can keep up, but <laughs> not many other guns can keep up. And right there, the accuracy. Look how small that crosshair is when you're crouched. Or even when they're that close. This thing's nasty. So right now I'm hiding because I'm on burn. I see other red dots, but I think they're above me. And I don't take a shot here. Because he doesn't see me, right? I want to get a shot and reposition myself and just play that cat and mouse game. That guy just got messed up by some C4, I think. So it's about constantly changing angles. And just because you see an LAV or a tank doesn't mean you shoot it. Right there, I could have had a shot, but a side shot. And it wasn't a high percentage shot. So I'm going to hide, check where the tanks keep flooding down, and look at that. 
that guy just jumped him and killed him with the C4. Not sure of trolling, not sure of messing around, but certainly perfect timing, no matter what it was. So uh, that was kind of funny moment in the uh, the round, and I actually rewound it when I uploaded the footage just to make sure what had happened there. Uh, obviously, the helicopters are the bane of any engineer. Uh, try to hide. Look at that. I survived. Our helicopter uh, took care of that for me, thank God, because I was definitely a dead duck sitting there. So when it comes to becoming a successful engineer in Battlefield 3, it boils down to patience, wit, positioning and be able to play the ultimate game of cat and mouse some of the best engineers in the game pass up free shots knowing it's not going to do max damage to a side or a rear don't be afraid not to shoot at a tank or an lav when it's staring you in the face and you only have the front exposed to you if you think it's going to drive by hold your fire if you see three or four other engineers just bomb them and let them have it and lastly a 10 foot tv shot just line it up and just hit it don't even guide the thing don't forget, I'm giving away free copies of Battlefield 4 to my PC community, including mouse pads and VIP slots. Check the link down below to see the details if you already haven't seen the video posted on it. It's a community challenge. You gotta knife me and take my dice approved tags from the 7th to the 30th of this month. If you've got a console, don't worry. I'm still gonna figure something out for you guys because I never realize what percentage of my community uses the console to play Battlefield 3. You guys will still have an opportunity to get some free copies of Battlefield 4. I just haven't figured out what yet. The details will be coming this Friday. Enjoy your guys' week. Thanks for watching. If you learned anything today, don't forget about the old thumbs up. And we'll see you soon, YouTube.